Today I'm going to be putting this heavy duty shelving unit on wheels so I can move it around my shop. Welcome to another episode. This is a project that I started about six months ago when I purchased a used heavy duty shelving unit that had a lot of rust on it. So what I'm going to do today is show you a little bit about the process that I went through, but more importantly, putting this on wheels. One of the things that I want to do in my new shop is to have everything on wheels, or almost everything. My Haas, I could put it on wheels, but it's $2,500 to buy the wheels, and it's not really worth that. But everything else I'd like to be on wheels to make it easy to reconfigure the shop, move things around, etc. So this is no exception, and so I'm going to take you through the process I went through to get this on wheels and which will include some CNC machining. It could be done just as easily with a manual machine but I don't have a manual mill. I have a CNC mill so that's what I used. Let's get started. I recently acquired the shelving unit which is a uh, really sturdy industrial shelving unit. I got a good price on it. Uh, and you can see there's quite a bit of rust and you know the paint is not in great shape. Some of the other shelves are in worse shape. There's also some bowing on this, um, but I don't really care about that. I'm going to be putting heavy things on here to get them up off my floor and out of boxes so I have more free space in my shop. I started with a wire brush and that worked, but it was pretty slow going as you can see here. After clearing off the old paint and also the rust, I used two coats of Rust-Oleum's Rusty Metal Primer. I then switched to a Diablo flap disc, which was certainly a lot faster. I've tried uh, various uh, wheels. Um, I tried the, uh, the wire brush wheel, and it works, but it's uh, slow. And then I tried these uh, 40 grit. Uh, Diablo flapper discs and these work really well but um, they don't last for more than one of these shelves. So I've heard about this type of uh, wheel and I'm going to give this one a try and uh, see how this lasts. Um, so uh, that's after uh, using it on one side and uh, it does have a little bit of a crown now it's no longer straight across but uh, looks like it's going to last for certainly a while longer so that's a lot better than the flap discs in terms of how long it's lasting. This is the bracket that I'm going to be making it's actually in two orientations basically there is a mirror image of this so Three of the legs will use this version, and another three of the legs will use a mirror image version of this. What I want to do though is back up to here, and this is usually where I start, which is modeling a minimum amount of the environment where the part needs to live. You can see that I've modeled the shape of the extrusions that make up the vertical legs of the shelf, and I've only modeled as much as I need. So I only have one hole in here. This is the hole that I'm going to use to hold the bracket in place. And so after that, it's a pretty simple model, as you can see here. But milling this is going to take uh, multiple operations because it has a hole through this side, a hole through here, um, a section, let me hide the angle, a section here and a section here. Now, one of the things that I've did is there's actually a radius in here. There's a fillet in the actual part that I didn't model, but I 3D printed uh, something and kind of got an idea of how much of a space I needed in between here and here to avoid that radius. I could have just put a chamfer on this edge, but doing the chamfer over here is a little trickier. So I just decided not to worry about that and just have it so there's a gap in here and that should work fine. Once I did that, then I created the mirror image of that, as you can see here. And for some reason I moved it away, I'm not sure why. Moving it away actually created a few issues when I milled it. Uh, and then for the milling purposes, as you'll see in a little bit, 
I added some lines here. So let's take a look at how I did the milling here. And again, what I'm going to do is hide what I don't need, so I don't need the angle. And I'm going to hide the mirror version as well. Uh, and I'm going to ignore, well, let me hide those sketches too. They're not relevant. Okay, so there are a bunch of setups. The first setup is this one here. Let's see, let me orient it correctly so that I've got X, Y, and Z. The, this setup is just to cut it to width. In this particular case, having to be the exact correct width doesn't matter, but you know, why not? Make them all the same. The next uh, operation is, let me uh, orient it correctly, this way here, and you can see it's drilling and then boring, and it's not going all the way through because the end mill I have is not long enough to go all the way through, which means that I'm going to have to flip it over and do it from the other side as well. Uh, next up, let's take a look at uh, the bottom here, which is going to be this orientation, and this is where, oops, wrong orientation. See, this way, okay. So this is where we're going through and milling out the hole from the other side. Um, and this does not need to match up perfectly, so I was a little bit loose in some of my setups, just to make it a little bit easier. Next up we have this orientation. And here's where we start to use adaptive to clear out those spaces, horizontal for cleanup. And then this is where I use the line here, so that when I mill this wall here. I'm going all the way from this end to this end. And then drilling that hole and boring that hole. And then finally a little bit of a chamfer. Next we have, let's see, this orientation. We're doing pretty much the same thing from this orientation. And again, this is where I used the sketch here so that this would clean up the entire wall here. So that's pretty much all the steps, and then they're repeated for the mirrored version. For this segment, I forgot to turn my microphone on. Here I'm using a Starrett wrench, um, which is so much nicer than the wrench I had before, with an M12 tap, a spiral, spiral flute tap. And uh, it takes a bit of force, but um, it's not an issue to tap all the way through. And as you saw here, I'm also using a, a tap follower. I didn't have to tap all the way through because the stub, the, the stud itself is not the full length. Uh, it's, all, it's less than half the length. So I'm only tapping down to where I run out of uh, the teeth on the tap itself. Assembly is uh, super simple. There's an M12 stud. And then this just screws onto the stud. And then I'll have to take a wrench to tighten this, but I'll do that after I put it on the, the shelving. You can see I have the, uh, the wheels mounted now, and it's really nice because this moves very easily. So I can move it around uh, the shop wherever I want. But when I uh, have decided where I want it to be, I just turn this section here, and what that does is it puts the rubber foot down, and now that's not going anywhere. So this gives me the sturdiness of it being attached to the ground without wheels, and at the same time the versatility of being on wheels so I can move it around really easily. I'm still not quite finished with this. Um, I have another two shelves that go across here that I have to finish. They're currently still rusty and grungy, so I need to finish them, uh, prime them, repaint them, and get them set up. But once I do, then I'll have uh, a lot of storage to get things off the floor in my shop. And right now, I'm not showing it to you, but right over there, there are lots of boxes that I haven't unpacked and heavy equipment or, or not so heavy things that I need to put somewhere. And so they're gonna go here, and my goal is that I will clear up a lot of the floor space and make this uh, shop a uh, much neater, cleaner, nicer to your shop. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, 
comment below, and I'll see you next time.